Hey guys, Scott Fishman here for Wrestling Inc. Um, coming up is a really captivating documentary coming out on May 20th uh, featuring a number of women's wrestlers. Among them is a familiar face that many of you know, uh, Katerina Waters, who's here with us today. Uh, how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I got an early screening of this uh, documentary, which I think comes at a really good time when it comes to women's wrestling um, and the way it's being seen. And, you know, you've been a part of different eras of, of women's wrestling over the years, as many will find out, even starting out wrestling men. Um, just tell me, uh, how did you become connected with this project? And uh, just talk about the experience of being a part of it. Yeah, I feel like, I think it came through Kita, Kita Rush. He was um, the one of the stars from WOW. And she'd given my contact information to Jeremy Norris, who was making the doc. And um, so they just got in touch and said, would you be interested in being a part of this and doing an interview? So of course I said, yes. And um, I mean, for me, it was just, we just did the, the one day, you know, the sit down interview. And then they used, you know, footage from other things to, you know, make up the, you know, the bulk of the, the mm -hmm. documentary as well as obviously in the interview from the other girls. And I mean, for me, the interesting part is watching it now. You know, to be honest, I haven't watched all of it yet because I have resistance to watching myself. <laughs> it takes me a while to be like, okay, I overcome my fear and say, I hope I didn't say anything stupid. Um, I'll watch it now. But um, for me, the interesting part is really, you know, obviously I know the other uh, women that are in, in the documentary, but to really get a better, deeper understanding of how they came to wrestling and really their backgrounds and what their path has been like that for me is, is really interesting, you know, to hear from a really. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned, yeah, you mentioned Kida, also Delilah Doom and Shelly yeah. Martinez, Charlie Martinez is also a part yes. of it. So um, Shelly, of course, I've known the longest because we were, you know, in developmental together in WWE. She was just going up on the road working for WWE on TV when I sort of got there. So I've known her since then and um, we've reconnected in later years and become better friends. And then Delala Doom, I've worked with on a number of occasions. And then Keita, I know through WOW, of course. Yeah. So tell me, what has it been, what was it like to kind of revisit, you know, those parts of your career um, starting out and kind of talking about it? I mean, I'm sure talking about it brings up a lot of memories and maybe ones that you didn't think of for a, a long time. Yeah, it is interesting because when you look back on things that happened, you suddenly have a different perspective, you know, on a lot of things, you know, and what it was like. Like, I mean, back in the day, you know, starting wrestling and sort of, you know, being the only girl and working with the guys and everything, that was, I mean, at the time, it was a really great experience and everybody, you know, the guys took great care of me and really made me feel like I was, you know, part of the show. I didn't feel like an outsider at that time, you know, but um, coming from that and then coming over here and doing a bunch of things. And then recently I went back um, to England a couple of years ago for a show and where before that had been pretty much me, you know, and a couple of other women on, on, that work for different companies. And now going back and there was like 20 women on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know just the evolution of that how you know how that's changed you know and puts into a different perspective what you went through what you, you know what my own journey was at the time yeah, for sure and of course you you talked about wow unfortunately uh we haven't seen it on access tv anymore um mm -hmm. tell me about just what you thought about that show because i think what was interesting about that program is you know it was episodic television but all these women took on different like personas, including, you know, yeah. yourself. So tell right. me, tell me, take me back to the, make, really made it stand out and, you know, hopefully maybe we'll revisit it again. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, they were planning something as far as I know, right before COVID hit, you know, so I think there is supposed to be something new. Um, fingers crossed, we'll, we'll wait and find out. What I really like about WOW is, um, like you said, it's very character-based. So it's a lot of, it's kind of a throwback, but it's a similar principle to what the original Glow was. So there are a lot of, you know, actresses and stunt women and dancers that are being trained up, you know, in WOW um, by Selena Majors, who's Bambi. Um, and so everybody is sort of either been given or helped develop their own, you know, character 
almost, well, I mean, I guess it's called, well, superheroes, right? So it's almost cartoonish in some ways, you know, but it's really fun. Uh, the production values are fantastic. You know, the setup, the lighting, everything like that. And also the, the training is great. You know, so you have some of the women aren't as experienced, you know, as others that have been on the independent circuit and things like that, but the matches are really well put together. And um, I just, I really enjoy the, the vibe of the thing. You know, I just remember last time we had the show and then I'm, we're backstage, we're looking at the monitor and I was just going, wow, this is a, this is a good show, you know? <laughs> well, you know, how, how in tune do you stay with the current product with women's wrestling? I mean, you were in Impact Wrestling for a, a quite, you know, a mm -hmm. bit as well. Um, you had an interesting character there. You went yes. back and now you see, you know, the knockouts, they're, they're signing a lot of, a number of uh, knockouts and they're kind of really renewed focus to that with the knockouts tag team championship. Right. Um, and then you look at WWE across the board, you have NXT, SmackDown, Raw, you touched on it. Now there's so many women there and they're getting the time. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you are part of a point where you're lucky to get three minutes of the match. So tell me, <laughs> yes. tell me what, it, what, what have you been watching? Just tell me what your thoughts are and how far we've come and maybe the work that still needs to be done. Yeah. Well, I don't really watch wrestling and then I don't sit down and watch an entire, you know, wrestling show. I just sort of, I, I get more clips, you know, on social media and I sort of keep up with a little bit of what's going on through Twitter and everything like that. Um, so I wouldn't say I'm deeply knowledgeable, you know, <laughs> on that subject at the moment, but definitely, as you say, you know, I can see, you know, the trend and everything that's happening. I know they have, well, they've always had and still have, you know, always fantastic women wrestlers over at Impact. And um, in WWE now, I mean, it's so saturated with amazing talents. I'm and, 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 anybody gets I was going to say, uh, NXT UK, okay. that's right. got to be fun for you to see a brand, you know, from WWE where you were, you know, in the Europe. That's got to be. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. I mean, that's another market, thankfully, for people to work and, you know, get their, get their names and faces out there and their talents and show people what they can do. Um, and, yeah, like I said, there's so so many now. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I sometimes think, you know, would I be better off now, or was I better off then? Because back then, maybe there wasn't, you know, the same opportunities. But then at the same time, now it's like you have to fight through a crowd of people to get noticed at all. So, mm -hmm. I mean, kudos to every single one of them. I was going to ask, you know, with the landscape of it, it you know, now, um, yeah, does that kind of motivate you to like, where do you see your your career in ring right now? I mean. Do you still um, feel like you have, you know, those dream matches or, or kind of you have one like another run in you like on one of the, the big companies, you think? I mean, I'm just I'm just enjoying, you know, wrestling every now and then when I get booked. I'm not sort of in terms of me building a career, I would say that part is probably over. Hmm. So I'm doing a lot of yeah, a lot more, you know, acting and and film things like that. That's really where my focus lies. So I feel like if I wanted to do another run quote unquote, I would really have to put, you know, all my focus and energy into that, uh, which, you know, my, my passion is kind of elsewhere at the moment in terms of moving forwards. Gotcha. But I, I, I do do some shows here and there. And I, I love obviously being, you know, around and being in front of the crowd entertaining. So. Yeah, for sure. And when it comes to, you know, have, how often were you were ever called, you know, when WWE had those women's Royal Rumble matches, you know, we always see blasts from the past. We saw Victoria, you know, a number of names. Were you ever called or approached about coming and doing one of those, those matches? I never called. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you were given the call like next year, perhaps. Open to? Next year will probably be my year. <laughs> That would be fun, I think. See. You said it. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things I wanted to get your your opinion on, um, which was a big news story the last couple of weeks, is when Mickey James was let go and mm. the way her gear was was brought in in the garbage bags. It's called Garbage Gate right now within the news. Right. And then a lot of other women kind of came forward and saying, "Hey, that happened to me as well." And but we didn't really know about it until she had posted that on social media. What's what was your experience uh, when it when it came to WWE and how you guys left things? I didn't have a drawer because I wasn't a big enough star to have a drawer. <laughs> the, you know the drawers at the at the show, so I nothing needed to be returned to me because I just brought everything myself. Right. So I, I 
have no experience like with that or what that was. I saw something on Twitter and I wasn't quite understanding what it what it meant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for me, it was just pretty much, well, I, I knew it was coming because because I hadn't been used very much, you know, in the months leading up to it. And it was actually, it was a lot of incidences where I had my flight information to fly out for TV. And then the night before at midnight, they would call and say, we don't need you now, you know? So it was incredibly frustrating and heartbreaking at that time. But then, so it wasn't a surprise, you know, when they called and said, okay, we're going to have to let you go, unfortunately. Hmm. Okay. But when you look back at your time, what do you... You froze on me. So I don't yeah. know if you can still hear me. Yeah, I can still hear you, but uh, you? yeah. Hold on one second. Um, let me see if maybe it's my... I've lost you, Scott. Hold I'm on. Sorry. One. Yeah. Can, we, can you hear me now or no? <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> sorry about that. You froze um, on me. I'm really long yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay. So... As far as when you, you know, as far as when you look back at that experience with WWE, what did you, what do you think you're most proud of? And what do you take from it that you move, that you're putting into your work right now? Oh, that's a, that's an interesting question. I guess, um, in a sense, well, somebody was asking about, you know, going uprooting my life basically, and just being, you know, in England and then just packing up everything and coming to Louisville. I'm saying, to be honest, like for me, uprooting my life and moving to another town or another state or country, it's never been daunting particularly for some reason you know especially because I had somewhere to go to and be I think um, in terms of an accomplishment or something that I've learned from it is that really if if you have something that gives you joy and that you're passionate about and that you're working towards you know to really you can't hold back on your energy you know, how much energy and focus you are going to bring to it. You know, for example, when I was in OVW, that was a complete focus. So it was every day training, every, you know, other day shows. And then in between, we would think about our storylines and we would, you know, Al Snow, our trainer, we would go up to him and say, I have a great idea for, the, for our storyline. You know, let's, let's do this and that. And then, but he would always take the time to sit down with us and discuss the idea and mold it into you know the best version of the idea that we could get unless it was a horrible idea in which case maybe he suggested something else (laughs) you know but just having that that constant focus and working on something and working towards something and then I think too you know trusting your talents you know when Beth and I got to do the ladder match and we're like what at first we thought he was joking when he when he really said it and then he goes no I, I trust you to do it and we're like oh okay so I guess you know, for me, at least, I was like, wow, I, I, maybe I need to trust myself more, you know. So I think, I think that sort of really understanding, you know, that maybe I, I am as, as talented as I need to be for a particular thing and to really throw myself behind it mm. and enjoy it, you know, and just, and just find the happiness in doing it. Well, you bring up a ladder match and I don't even, like, that just sparked a memory. I got to go back and watch that. <laughs> oh, thanks. What do you remember about that night in that match? I really particularly remember being behind the curtain and um, just think Beth, yeah, Beth went out. No, I can't remember who went out first, but just being behind the curtain, you know, and then seeing the ladder out there and just the lights and the music playing. And I'd never so profoundly looked forward as much, you know, to walking out there and doing our thing, just because we were so well prepared for it, um, that I really felt confident Mm -hmm. about it. And I was ready to go out there and really enjoy every single second. I love that. I I remember that moment and then, yeah, I just just remember the match going off and just everything just flowed, you know, and Beth obviously is, you were gonna get in the ring with anybody, you might as well be. Beth Phoenix, if you wanted something good to come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> was there, yeah. Yeah. Was there one storyline or anything that you pitched or that was pitched to you that didn't kind of happen in WWE that you wish kind of that actually got, you know, wished you that actually got realized? Uh, well, I pitched a lot of things in WWE that in WWE we had sort of, I don't know if it was bad luck or if it was just because I didn't care, but in, we had a lot of, 
storylines that started and that never came to a conclusion. You know, we started a, me and Paul Burchill, we started a storyline with William Regal and then that ended because, you know, I can't quite remember, but then we had a story with um, Ken Kennedy and that got cut short because they drafted him to a separate brand, you know? And then we had a story that started with Boogeyman and that got cut, cut short again because, you know, he left and then, yeah. So it was, we had a lot of things that started and stopped, which was very frustrating. And I had pitched some more ideas for me, you know, for the storyline with Boogeyman. And then I pitched some different ideas for us with the Hurricane Helms um, feud as well in ECW that unfortunately weren't materialized. Yeah. And I pitched about five or six other storylines with various <laughs> characters. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I went nowhere, I was just ignored. Yeah. <laughs> but I thought we're brilliant. <laughs> Man, one day we you write ever write a book, we'd love to. <laughs> yeah. but, Maybe I'll write like a, a short story book with all the different, right? There you go. We got an idea going. <laughs> um, you know, you touched on it earlier about you know your 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 passions are other uh, you know elsewhere, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know. You look at your IMDb account and. You see so many projects that you're working on, you know, a lot of horror in different pro movies and things like that. Tell tell everyone kind of what are some things beyond the ring that you're you're like working on and that you're most proud of these days. Yeah, I mean, I'd always done acting before wrestling, which I guess that not everybody knows. And I actually went to university and I studied film and drama, um, also you know before wrestling. So that was always like plan A. <laughs> <laughs> and then wrestling happens but also was amazing you know so then when WWE ended up they came out here to Los Angeles to get back into acting and all that so um I've been in a few things that's uh, on Amazon if people want to check it out it's Karate Kill which is probably my favorite <laughs> movie one of my favorite movies that I've done um which is you know an action sort of a dystopian action you know, also a couple of years ago, it came out Red Com 1, which is a zombie film. Last year, I did a horror comedy called Sorority of the Damned. So I played a witch, I'm unrecognizable. <laughs> I don't mean to say that, but that was a super fun project. And uh, I'm writing my own things. I just shot a concept trailer for a feature film that I wrote. Wow. Called uh, Beautiful Monsters, which I can update you about if I, once it's put together. And I just, I shot just kind of like a sizzle reel for it. So I'm in post-production on that. And um, yeah, hopefully many more things to come. Perfect. All right. And, you know, we have the, the other side of the ring, of course, is another one that's coming out. Um, yeah. just, tell people, just tell people like, you know, why people should check it out, basically. Just let people know why you're passionate about it, you know. Mm -hmm women's wrestling is so big right now, but maybe a lot of people don't know your stories, your respective stories, and maybe yeah. it'll motivate someone who's maybe a, a girl, a little girl or a woman at home. And she's watching like, Hey, you know, they did this and they can, you know, whether it's wrestling or something else and they can get into and pursue their dreams. So yeah, tell, for me, sure. tell me about, yeah, I think, well, for me, like the great thing about the other side of the ring is, you know, our, how different our backgrounds are, you know, where you can see there's so many different ways you could maybe, you know, come to wrestling. For some of us, it was something that we grew up wanting to do. And for some of us, it was something that was a happy accident. So just, uh, I think the personal stories are what makes this documentary particularly intriguing. Hmm. You know? And then, you know, like you said, as a inspiration, hopefully for, <laughs> for little girls that might want to do something like this or I mean anything or boys too I, I should... boys. yeah of course yes <laughs> I could be a role model for a boy <laughs> right right I pay from that. sorry I didn't mean that. I mean no I mean certainly um and it's transferable into you know any other industry you know and it's just about you know finding something that brings you joy and then makes you happy and then and then putting your focus and energy towards it and the, the rewards can be amazing yeah and for those that want to follow you and, you know, I, I, you're still open for bookings, it seems, for wrestling and appearances, conventions and things like that. How can they find you? So my Twitter and Instagram are both Katarina's Infamy. And then I have a website. It's katarinasinfamy.com. My contacts info on there as well. Perfect. 
Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Really enjoyed okay. learning your story and so many others. I mean, having watched you, of course, on WWE TV, CW, and and you know TNA, you know you you know you know you watch it and you see that, but then you don't know you know, the backstory. So it's really cool right. to, to see that, and I think a lot of fans will enjoy that as well. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. No problem. Take care. Awesome. Bye. You too. <laughs>